Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Calvary Church. My name is Pastor Bobby, the Worship and Creative Arts Pastor, and today I will be your host for Church Online. Before we kind of get into everything, and just a couple of updates for all of us, just to make sure that we know what's going on here at Calvary during this Advent season. Uh, we have our Christmas Eve service happening on the 24th at 6 p.m. here at the church. And this is always an event that I think uh, you should be thinking about, even weeks ahead of time, to think about who it is that maybe you could invite for that day, for that service. It's such a great time to invite somebody that maybe God's been placing on your heart. And so think about who that is and invite them to our Christmas Eve service, candlelight service at 6 p.m. here at Calvary Church. Secondly, we have a giving project that we've been talking about through the whole month of December, where specifically above our tithes and offerings, we are giving to something outside of ourselves. And this year it's gonna to be to our global and local workers. And so everything that you give that would have the memo Advent, Advent giving on it would go to our local and global workers in this specific season. Lastly, if you're new with us, we're so glad that you're joining with us, but we'd love to know who you are and help you get connected here at Calvary. So you can head to our website, calvaryptbo.church, click the link, I'm new, and you can learn a little bit more about who we are and we can get to know you as well. Well, this week is the third week of Advent and we are now talking about joy today. And so let's start by reading our scripture for this morning. It's from Luke 2, 8 to 11. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. And so today we light our third candle, which is for joy. Let's continue on in our service by singing songs of praise to God and then diving into our message for the day. Oh, 
everlasting Father, His name shall be the Prince of Peace, the mighty God, His name shall be Well, good morning, Calvary. It's so great to be with you during our Advent season. I can't believe how quickly Christmas is coming, and I'm sure you feel the same way. Last week in our service, we were speaking about peace and taking the time to have uh, peace really sink into our hearts during this time of year. And so this week, although we're talking about joy, we are also going to be reflecting on the peace that Christ promises us, the peace that surpasses all understanding. And so I pray that his peace will fill you with joy today and that you'll enjoy this message together as a church family. We are talking about having an abundant life. And so John 10 verse 10 says, the thief comes only to steal, kill and destroy, but I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. The Christmas life is a life that is not only full of peace, but full of hope, but full of peace. At times, the commercialized Christmas life can feel like it's robbing us of peace. How many people have had that moment this week already? Let me tell you about my moment. I was actually working on this sermon and I thought, okay, it's been a long while. I'm gonna gonna just go out. I'm gonna get a Christmas drink from Starbucks. Treat myself. It's the end of the week. I'm gonna go out and do this. And so I just, I'm all happy working on my message, but I'm like, I'm just gonna take a little break go get something nice and cozy in a red cup and it'll make me feel good and it'll be nice. So I thought, I'll jump in my car, I get in my car, I go just down the street, which is never good for my budget to have a Starbucks just down the street. So I go just down the street from the church and I get a, um, a Starbucks drink, but before I get there, I first get into the driveway and someone tries to back out right in front of me. I have to actually lay on my horn to stop them from hitting my car. Then I go to turn into the driveway and then somebody else is also in my way for the lineup. So I go around them, get in through the lineup, get, decide uh, th- there's too much of a lineup, so I'm gonna go inside. So I go inside, get my Starbucks. It's not really the end of the world. I know this is sounding petty right now, but stay with me. So then we come out, I come out, I go to turn right so that I can come out at the lights and that'll be much easier for turning left on Lansdowne. Somebody say amen. And so. Then I instead find a lady about to turn this way who's blocking so I can't even turn right. So instead of waiting for her, I'm like, forget it, I'll just turn left. I turn left, at which time somebody else starts to back out and almost hits me and I have to hit my horn the second time in one parking lot. This is, no, this is not peace. <laughs> and so I turn left which then leads me to turning left on the land sound, which takes another 10 minutes out of my day. Peace 
Christmas, even the warm, fuzzy moments of Christmas that you go for or aim for or drive out to go get, those moments sometimes rob you of peace. But the Christmas life is full of peace, isn't it? The Christmas life on its own from a worldly perspective isn't always a life full of peace, but left unchecked, it's more than capable of robbing us of peace. And so today, if you feel like you're being robbed of peace this Christmas, we're gonna take it back, okay? We're gonna embrace peace today a peace that surpasses all understanding, a peace that's deeper than a warm cup of coffee, a a peace that's more than the fuzzy feeling you get when a candle's lit. Part of that robbing of peace is the busyness that we get into at this time of year. It's the pressure of also meeting people's expectations. That's difficult when you're checking off that list including your own list of expectations of what you want to see accomplished during Christmas season. The Christmas life as a believer in Christ should be a life full of peace. And perhaps today, if you're struggling, not just about experiencing peace at Christmas, but at different seasons of life, may I encourage you today that we can have peace in Christ. We can have peace. So I have three simple things of why we can have peace this morning. The first thing is we can have peace because Christ's peace is transcendent. The word transcendent in dictionary says beyond or above the range of normal or merely physical human experience. It surpasses the ordinary, it's exceptional. Philippians four, six to seven says, do not, someone says do not, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. May I suggest something? May I suggest that it's possible that our misplaced expectations of God himself sometimes robs us of the peace of God. Let me explain. The expectation that life is supposed to be safe and easy as a believer, that can rob us of our peace in God. The expectation that God is somehow kind of like a holy Santa Claus where he just meets all of our expectations and our our list of wishes of wants. If I'm good, God will give me exactly what I ask for in life. And that mentality robs us of peace. And here's why. Because when we don't get all we ask for, then we assume that he's put us on the naughty list. That's what that means. God has not answered that prayer request, so he's obviously not happy with me. And we get this idea, this mentality of our expectation of God that something that, that truly isn't from God or of God. It robs us of peace because when we don't get all we ask for, we feel like we don't measure up. In the Romans 5 passage, it says this in verse 1, Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into his grace in which we now stand. And we boast in the hope of the glory of God. It's the understanding of the depths of 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 the depths of our salvation that we find peace and understanding truly what we have, that we have now favor with God, that we have been justified not by our own actions, but by faith that we are made right before the Lord. And we see in scripture, the New Testament church certainly didn't demand safety or freedom in their life either. Their expectations were were different than yours and, uh, and ours. Not only so, Verse three says, but we also glory in our sufferings 
Romans says, because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance, character, and character, hope. So if our experiences of a Christian life is a life with no suffering, if that's what our expectations are, then we're probably mistaken. Suffering is a part of living in a broken and sinful world. However, God is working in us for his greater purposes. These greater purposes, no matter the suffering that comes our way, that's why when we pray, we can have this peace that surpasses all understanding in the midst of it. Christian life is a life of peace because it's a peace that's transcendent. It surpasses the ordinary experiences of life. Christ's peace is transcendent. Secondly, Christ's peace is timely. This, this came over and over in my mind this week. In fact, my whole message is gonna come right out of this, this passage in Luke that we're gonna go to, but Christ's peace is timely. May you know today that the Lord is not late in bringing you peace. Luke chapter two, we read some of it today at the, at the Advent reading, but at the beginning in verse one, it says, in those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria and everyone went to their own town to register. This is the time and place when Jesus was about to come into the world. In those days, I'm blown away by the truth that at just the right time, Jesus came. There's this passage, Galatians 4, verse 4, that says, But when the set time had come, fully come, God sent his Son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law, that we might receive adoption to sonship. God is a timely God. Christy McLellan, in Rediscovering Israel, which, by the way, is a great book that some people in our congregation are reading and they told me about it, and so I, I picked it up and I've been reading in it. Anyways, it's called Rediscovering Israel. And she says the combination of Roman peace at the time, in those days, a shared language that had happened within culture, Roman roads and synagogues that had been built. It set the stage for the arrival of the promised rescuer. It was the perfect time, did you know, for Jesus, the Prince of Peace to be born. Born into a world, into a time and a place when all the nations were coming through its corridor. A time when the good news, the peace of the message of peace on earth could be delivered, not just to the, uh, the descendants, excuse me, of Abraham, but to the descendants of Abraham through faith that would come from every nation. We serve a calculated and timely God. Amen? If not one hair on your head falls without him knowing it, then you know that he's a good detailer. And he'll bring peace in a timely fashion. Sometimes we have to wait, and that's when we're called to prayer. But it's in prayer that he will meet us with a peace that surpasses all understanding because his timing is perfect. In my experience, we can't exactly plan for peace. We can't fabricate it, although, fabricate it, although we try and we can become more peaceful and aware for sure, of our surroundings, uh, kind of center ourselves, get ourselves in a, in, a, in a posture, be able to receive from God. But godly peace, it lands like a dove. It lands like a dove on our shoulder when we most need to hear the Father saying, I see you, son. I see you, child. And you are in Christ, and therefore I am well pleased. This is the peace that God promises. It's timely peace. It's a timely peace. Uh, recently, we were waiting in a waiting room, and I don't know if you've ever waited in a waiting room before. Man, you get a lot of people watching time in, don't you? <laughs> Just watching people, going back and forth. 
what what I didn't realize about this waiting room, which was very frustrating at the time, was the waiting room then led to another waiting room. Come on. Who does that to people and thinks it's okay? You, they call your name and you get up and then you go to another waiting room and you wait some more and then you're like, am I really going to get to see the person I've come to see? And then they put you in a room and then you what? You wait. <laughs> Trust his timing if the Lord has taken you from one season of waiting into another season of waiting. It's okay. He's got you. He's with you. There's something new you can wait. There's things that you can appreciate in each of those seasons of waiting. But trust him because he's a God whose peace is timely. I love the passage and it just keeps going over and over in my head. Isaiah 9 verse 6 to 7 For to us, a child is born. To us, a son is given. And the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Verse 7 goes on to say, Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord, the zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. The scripture, it came when the kingdom of Judah was facing the threat of Assyrian empire. It was the eighth century BC. The hope was that a future king would be born, which could have been in that case, Ahaz's king, Ahaz's son, Hezekiah. But guess what? His reign ended. And we serve a God who is a child who was born, our wonderful counselor, Almighty God, everlasting Father, our Prince of Peace, and his peace will have no end. And his kingdom will last forever. His timing is perfect. Luke 2, the passage that we're reading from today in verse 4, it says, So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth into Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. And he went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. His timing, his peace, it's transcendent. His peace, it's timely. But his peace is also very uncomplicated. For unto us a child is born. The time came for the baby Jesus to be born. You know, every year when we're putting up decorations, and this year has been different because the boxes are in different spots in the house. (laughs) Just like, where is that box? I know where it is in the old house. (laughs) But every year we took out, take out the decorations and there's this big question that looms as we begin to take out the lights. How many people know what I'm talking about? You know. Do the lights all work? Did we throw out lights last year? And if we did, did we replace them? And I don't know. This year we, we were good. We were good. But every other year, I'm convinced that we take them out and we forget. They're tangled mess and we kind of pull them all apart and we take them out. We forget that some of the lights went out and some of them had to be replaced. And maybe you're here at another Christmas and it's been more than a few Christmases where things have been kind of messed up. Where the loved one was taken before their time where you're grieving over a season that's no longer no longer exists grief it has a way of sneaking up on you 
especially during the seasons. And it's messy. And you forget how it hurts. Jesus is here to offer you peace again. You might get caught off guard by the grief or memories, but with it can follow his peace. John 14, 27, it was Jesus himself while he's explaining to his disciples that, I mean, they've been having this great time together. They've been walking life, doing journey of life together. It's Jesus and his friends and they're, they're together. And he's talking about his kingdom coming and he's just been sharing so much with them. They've been empowered to do so many things they never thought was possible. People who were, were, were blind can now see. People who were lame can now walk. And they're feeding thousands of people and they're seeing lives change before their eyes. And now he's telling them that he's got to go. He's leaving. And they're hurt and they're questioning and they're wondering why. And Jesus says these words, and he says it to you and I today too. Peace, he says, I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. Hmm. Those words are timeless, aren't they? When G- Jesus spoke his words, it was, it was like a parent bringing calm to an uncertain heart in their child sitting there. It was as if he was speaking to them, even out of the Father's love. It's much like I would expect he heard from his own mother, even around that manger in that stall, where she spoke words over him, Picture it with me, Luke 2, 6. And while they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. And she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. It's this picture of the manger scene. The turn of events wasn't exactly what his mother Mary probably expected either. That she was going to have a baby where animals hang out? In a a lowly stable? Not at home? Not surrounded by a community of women and friends who would help? No, she would be there giving birth to the Son of God. She found herself in a moment of both uncertainty, unfamiliarity, perhaps a lot of fear. But suddenly it shifted to being on sacred ground, holy ground. That same experience is here for you and I today. We can go from being experiencing disappointment Uh, being in an unexpected situations where we can be wondering why this has happened or, or why doesn't it look the way I thought it would look. And Jesus can come into the moment and bring us new peace. Turn the lowly stable into sacred ground in our hearts. This was the place where God had led Mary and Joseph. This is where the Christ child would be born. And there was peace. There was pain. But what birthing process doesn't include a little pain? There was uncomplicated, unexpected peace in that place. And you may not have expected it, but he's here to offer you peace today. Maybe you thought, I'm good. I don't need, I don't need peace. I'm, I'm holding it together. I, I can figure this out. You can just let your guard down today in the presence of God and church family because God wants to give you supernatural peace. Is the Christmas life a life full of peace? I believe it, it can be. For unto us 
a child is born. Unto us, a son is given. I hope you enjoyed that message and that it really touched your heart. I just want to take this moment to say, if you'd like to reach out for prayer, you can do that just by going through our website and connecting with a pastor that way. We would love to pray for you. We, we want to pray that peace would be yours, that you would be filled with joy this season, even during the times when it may feel like you're suffering or struggling to find peace or contentment and joy. I, I've been thinking about the scripture all week. It comes from Hebrews chapter 12. It says, let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God, considered him who endured such opposition from sinful men so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Our desire for you this Christmas season is that you will experience the Christmas life to the full. And so don't lose heart today. We pray that God would fill you with his peace, with his hope, and with his joy as you continue during the Advent season. Let's pray together. Jesus, thank you so much for everyone who's listening today. I pray your peace would be theirs. I pray that they would feel joy filling their heart this week in unexpected ways. And God, we just look forward to the celebration of the birth of Jesus once again. And we pray that you would watch over us until we can all be together again and uh, that your will would be done in our lives. And we pray this in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much, Pastor Michelle, for sharing that word with us today. If you would like to listen to the whole message, you can do that by following us on anything that you watch or listen to podcasts on, or you can head to our website, calvaryptbo.church slash sermons, and you can see all of the sermons from the past week and listen to the full audio version for this week. We would love for you yet again, just to be reminded of our Christmas Eve service, candlelight service on December 24th. Think about, pray about who it is that you can bring with you to that service. Join with your family as we celebrate the coming of Jesus together. Have a great week.